Today I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska um, to visit a, a site of uh, one of the most notorious uh, crime sprees that happened in the United States. Uh, it was the um, escapades of Charles Starkweather and his girlfriend, uh, Carol Fugate. And during a three-day period uh, in 1958, uh, there were 11 people killed in and around Lincoln, Nebraska. And so we're going to visit uh, some of the areas that, that it actually happened at and uh, visit some of the graves of his victims and some of the locations of the crimes. So come along with me. Well, this is where the crime spree started in uh, 1958. I know the wind is terrible here. We're going to try to film this. Um, this is what at one time was the Crest service station. And uh, there was a, a young 21-year-old that was working inside here named Robert Covert. And he was the first one that Charles Starkweather murdered. He robbed him and then took him out to another location and shot him. But this is the service station it happened at. Uh, he parked right, probably about where my car is sitting right now. I walked in there, surprised him, and uh, robbed the place and then made him drive Starkweather's car uh, to the next location where he shot him. Looks like the station is basically the same. Um, the pumps and stuff have probably been changed out and some of the facade that's on the siding, but from the pictures I've seen um, from the news articles during that time, it looked just about like it does right now. Now Charles made him turn north on 27th Street. And you got to realize that these are were basically uh, dirt roads at the time in 1958. He made him travel about a mile and he uh, would eventually come to Superior Street and he told him to take a right on S Superior Street. Now bear in mind that this is in the, on the edge of the city. This, you know, it doesn't look the way it did back then. This was out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's fairly it's heavily populated now, but at that time it, it wasn't. Now this is Superior Street. This is where Charles made him turn right. Now Charles had him drive down Superior Street to an area that he was familiar with and most people, uh, most of the kids in uh, Lincoln were familiar with. Uh, there's an area, uh, there's a, a river that runs through here called Salt Creek and on the banks of the Salt Creek um, was a, where a lady named Bloody Mary lived. And the big game back then was to try to run up and touch her door without her shooting you with buckshot that was loaded, uh, or 12 gauge loaded with uh, rock salt. Or at least that's what the stories were. And we're about to pass the Salt Creek right now. Mary's house would have been just right up here off the right where these buildings there are now and Charles made him drive about another three-quarter of a mile and when he got to about this location I'm 
pretty close to the location. I'm within a hundred yards of, of where it actually happened. Uh, probably even less than that. Um, he forced him to get out of the car and then they shot him. And uh, he was found the next morning. Uh, you got to realize this is in December and it was it was really cold out. There was snow on the ground and uh, they found his froze, frozen body in the middle of this, what at that time was a two-lane street, and it was gravel. Now it's a four-lane, you know, kind of major road. Now Charles was, um, I think he was 18 or 19. I think he's probably 18. I've forgotten. Uh, he was a, actually, he didn't graduate from high school. It dropped out and um, was a, worked as a garbage truck man uh, here in Lincoln. Uh, he was fascinated with James Dean. He saw Rebel Without a Cause and, and he dressed like him, wore the leather jackets, slicked his hair back, uh, always had a cigarette in his mouth, rolled his sleeves up like James Dean did. Now, his girlfriend, uh, Carol, Carol Fugate, was only 14 years old. Um, and it's not really understood whether or not she, I mean, she was arrested and sentenced for uh, the crimes that all happened, but there's some debate as to whether or not she actually was guilty of being involved in it. I think she was from everything I've read. But there's a, another side that says she wasn't. She's still alive. She's out of prison, has been since the mid-'70s, and, um, and lives in Michigan. Um, I think she's, I don't know, pretty close to 80 years old now. She was in a serious car wreck about three or four years ago and uh, almost died at that time. But as far as I know, she's still alive in Michigan somewhere. Now, while Carol was at school, uh, Charlie came over to this location here where this field is. And this is 924 Belmont. And uh, it was a rundown house that Carol lived in with her stepfather, her mother, and her stepsister. And Charlie went in there and murdered all three of them. And, uh, and it's kind of debated whether or not they actually stayed at the house or not after that, when they were murdered. But they put a sign on the house to make people think that everybody in the house had the flu and that people needed to stay away. But this is where the location of the house was. Just right in this field here. Now this is actually not a through street right now. It's a, it goes into a shopping center. Uh, but it, at that time, the, the street, Belmont Street, ran all the way down and this shopping center wasn't here. Okay, I'm at Wayuka, and I'm assuming that's the way you uh, pronounce it cemetery in Lincoln, Nebraska, and this is where Charles Starkweather is buried. That's where they buried him after they uh, electrocuted him, and also there's quite a few of his victims that are buried in the same cemetery. So let's go take a look. Okay, I had to look for quite a bit to find it, uh, but here's where he's buried. See, he was executed on June 25th, 1959. And this is where he lays. Now, his, there are the wards, or people that he murdered, they're buried out here. I'm going to go try to find their grave. Carol Fugate's stepfather, mother, and stepsister are also buried in this cemetery. 
I'm going to go try to find them before it gets dark. Okay, I'm at section 25 in this Wayuka Cemetery, and I stopped and asked one of the guys um, what the name meant, and it, it's an Indian name that uh, means place of rest. So, now this is where the wards are buried. Uh, they were killed by Charles and, and Carol, uh, and he was a rich industrialist. And the, only re the only connection that Charles had to this guy was that he used to pick up his trash when he was working on the trash trucks. And he, he lived in a, you know, a, a nice area of, um, of Lincoln here. So here he is. His name is Chester Lauer Ward, and his wife was killed at the same time. And they also killed the maid. Um, they had a live-in maid, and the maid uh, is, she's not buried in this cemetery. Um, I don't know if I'll end up going to that grave or not, but... Anyway, uh, I will be going to uh, this house. This house still exists. Now we're coming up on section 35 in the cemetery. And this is where um, Carol Fugates, the, the girlfriend of Charles, this is where her stepfather where her stepsister and her mother are buried. After the couple killed uh, Carol's family, uh, they headed about all oh, 15 miles southeast of Lincoln to the town of Bennett, Nebraska. They went to a, a gentleman that Charlie knew that used to let him hunt on his land. He was a farmer named August Meyer. And they killed August. And then they got their car stuck. And, uh, but here's where August is, is buried. He was killed on January 27th, 1958. Now, after their car broke down at August Myers property, they uh, were kind of stranded. And it just so happened that a teenage couple, uh, a boy named that was 17 years old that was named Robert Jensen and his date for that night I don't know if it's actually his girlfriend um, but they were out on a date and I think she was 16 her name was Carol King and they stopped to help um, Charlie Starkweather and and Carol Fugate and it ended up getting them killed. And this is where Robert Jensen is buried. And he's buried in the same cemetery that August Meyer is buried in, just right, you know, not 50 feet from, from where August Meyer is buried. Carol King, the girl that was with Robert Jensen that night. She's buried right here, just on the other side of the cemetery from where Robert Jensen is buried. Now she was, her and, and Robert were actually thrown into, or forced to go down into a um, old cellar that was on a school property. It was abandoned. And uh, Charlie actually 
tried to rape Carol, uh, but I guess he was unsuccessful in doing that. And then her her genitals were mutilated, and they're not really sure. There was some talk that that uh, Carol Fugate is the one that did that because she was so mad that that Charlie had tried to have sex with her. But this is where she's buried. After Charlie left uh, Bennett, Nebraska, he came here to the ward residence. And this is what you're seeing right here. And he murdered Mr. Ward and his his wife and the maid. And this is where that happened. It's on uh, South 24th Street. The house still looks just the same as it did in the, the pictures when the murder happened. Charlie knew about this because he was a... Uh, garbage collector in this area. Now the last person that was murdered during their spree was a salesman uh, that was had pulled over on the side of the road in Wyoming um, to take a nap. He had been driving and uh, was sleeping in the car and Charlie needed to switch cars uh, because it, at that time he he had the ward's car and he knew that the police were looking for that and he woke the salesman up i can't recall the salesman's name right now and uh, he shot him through the windshield of the car a couple of times and killed him and it was at that point that that a a state trooper, some law enforcement person saw him and and they gave chase and ended up arresting him at that time. So I hope you've kind of enjoyed this little macabre tour of, of uh, where the inspiration for Natural Born Killers, the Oliver Stone movie, was based. Thank you so much for watching.